going to lose the TV time. <laughs> Members of the Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, distinguished members of the Congress, honored guests, and my fellow Americans. A number of times in past years, members of Congress and a president have come together in meetings like this to resolve a crisis. I have asked for this meeting in the hope that we can prevent one. It would be hard to find many Americans who aren't aware of our stake in the Middle East, the Persian Gulf, or the NATO line dividing the free world from the communist bloc. And the same could be said for Asia. But in spite of, or maybe because of, a flurry of stories about places like Nicaragua and El Salvador, and yes, some concerted propaganda, Many of us find it hard to believe we have a stake in problems involving those countries. Too many have thought of Central America as just that place way down below Mexico that can't possibly constitute a threat to our well-being. And that's why I've asked for this session. Central America's problems do directly affect the security and the well-being of our own people. And Central America is much closer to the United States than many of the world trouble spots that concern us. So, we work to restore our own economy. We cannot afford to lose sight of our neighbors to the south. El Salvador is nearer to Texas than Texas is to Massachusetts. Nicaragua is just as close to Miami, San Antonio, San Diego, and Tucson as those cities are to Washington, where we're gathered tonight. But nearness on the map doesn't even begin to tell the strategic importance of Central America bordering as it does in the Caribbean, our lifeline to the outside world. Two-thirds of all our foreign trade and petroleum pass through the Panama Canal and the Caribbean. In a European crisis, at least half of our supplies for NATO would go through these areas by sea. It's well to remember that in early 1942, a handful of Hitler's submarines sank more tonnage there than in all of the Atlantic Ocean. And they did this without a single naval base anywhere in the area. And today the situation is different. Cuba is host to a Soviet combat brigade, a submarine base capable of servicing Soviet submarines and military air bases visited regularly by Soviet military aircraft. Because of its importance, the Caribbean basin is a magnet for adventurism. We're all aware of the Libyan cargo planes refueling in Brazil a few days ago on their way to deliver medical supplies to Nicaragua. Brazilian authorities discovered the so-called medical supplies were actually munitions and prevented their delivery. You may remember that last month, speaking on national television, I showed an aerial photo of an airfield being built in the island of Grenada. But if that airfield had been completed, those planes could have refueled there and completed their journey. If the Nazis during World War II and the Soviets today could recognize the Caribbean and Central America as vital to our interest, shouldn't we also? For several years now, under two administrations, the United States has been increasing its defense of freedom in the Caribbean Basin. And I can tell you tonight, democracy is beginning to take root in El Salvador, which until a short time ago knew only dictatorship. The new government is now delivering on...